Hello dear students, in this video, let's go through some randomly selected previous board paper questions from the chapter Acid, Bases and Salts. Let's just summarize the chapter and then move on to the questions. Acids are substances that can release H plus ions in water. There are weak acids and strong acids. Strong acids dissociate completely into ions whereas weak acids partially dissociate into ions. The mineral acids like HCl, H2SO4 and HNO3 are strong acids whereas vinegar is a weak acid. In indicators, acids turn blue litmus red. It retains the yellow color in turmeric. It turns China rose indicator magenta. It remains colorless in phenolphthalein and it can change methyl orange red. So these are the general characteristics of acids and bases are usually bitter to taste and soapy to touch. Again based on the amount of dissociation there are weak bases and strong bases. Weak bases partially dissociate in water like ammonium hydroxide where a strong base can completely dissociate in water and bases usually produce OH- ions in water. Bases which are soluble in water are known as alkalis. In indicators bases can turn red litmus blue. It may makes turmeric red in color, it changes the china rose indicator to green and it gives a pink color in phenolphthalein. Looking into the acid base reaction, there are three main reactions for acids. Acids react with metal and give a metal salt and hydrogen gas. Acid reacts with metal carbonates and releases metal salt, carbon dioxide and water. Acids react with metal oxides and give metal salt and water. Bases react with metal similar to acids, they also release hydrogen gas. But bases don't show any reaction with metal carbonates. When acid and base react with each other, it produces salt and water and this reaction is known as neutralization reaction. We can also see that when acid reacts with metal oxide, the same type of product is formed. So from that we can understand that metal oxides are basic in nature. Now let's move forward to the questions. First question. You have four solutions A, B, C and D with pH 6, 9, 12 and 7. Identify the most acidic and most basic solutions. Arrange the above four solutions in the increasing order of H plus ion concentration. State the change in the color of pH paper on dipping in solution C and D. So we know that pH is universal indicator. In universal indicator, it gives values from 0 to 14. 0 to 7 are values that indicate acids and from 7 to 14 it is for bases. The value 7 shows for neutral. Now pH of A is 6, of B is 9, C is 12 and D is 7. So from these values we can understand that A is an acidic solution, B and C are basic solutions and D is a neutral solution. So let's look into the first question. Identify the most acidic and most basic solution. In the four solutions, you can understand that only A is the acidic solution. So the most acidic solution will be A. Now what about the most basic solution? We know that when the value increases, in cases of base, higher value will be most basic. So here the most basic solution will be C because it is having higher value 12. Second question, arrange the four solutions in the increasing order of H plus ion concentration. So increasing order means the first solution will have least hydrogen ion. That means it is basic because hydrogen ions are released by acids. Now among the four solutions, B and C are basic solutions. That means they will be having less amount of hydrogen ion concentration. Among B and C, C is more basic in nature. That means it will have least hydrogen ion concentration. So the first solution will be C in the increasing order which is having very less hydrogen ion concentration is C. Then comes B. Now the left out solutions are A and D. Now we know that D is neutral in nature. So compared to A, D will be again having less hydrogen ions. So after C, B, D and then comes A. So the answer is C, B, D and A. Question C, state the change of color in pH paper on dipping solution C and D. Now C is basic. Usually basic solutions means pH paper will show a blue or bluish shade colors. So it will be blue and D is a neutral solution. So it will be having green color in pH paper. Now moving on to the second question. Which one of these has a higher concentration of H plus ion? 1 molar HCl or 1 molar CH3COOH. CH3COOH means acetic acid. Now we have learnt that based on dissociation into ions, acids can be categorized into strong acids and weak acid. Strong acids completely dissociate into ions whereas weak acid partially dissociate in 
ions in water uh, in the first part itself we have understood that hcl is a strong acid and acetic acid is a weak acid also we can check with the ph paper that in ph hcl that is stomach acid we know you know the gastric juice consists of hcl and its ph value is around 0 to 1 and vinegar is actually uh, the solution of acetic acid so its value is around 3 to 4 that means from ph paper also we can understand that vinegar is a weaker acid than hcl so then who will have more uh, or higher concentration of h plus ions yes it will be one molar hcl will have higher concentration of h plus ion because it is a stronger acid and it dissociate completely in water question number three identify the compound x on the basis of the reactions given below also write the name and chemical formula of a b and c students you can pause this video and you can just copy this diagram given there and then compare it with the acid base reactions which we have already recollected in the first part of the video so here you can see the three reactions given by acid and the two main reaction that is basic basis reacting with metal and which is reacting with acid to form salt and water so now let's uh, move back to the question so here there is a compound x it is reacting with zinc and it is releasing hydrogen gas this compound x is reacting with hydrochloric acid and it is releasing two product one of the product is water again it is reacting with acetic acid and one of the product is water so from the second and third reaction we can understand that it is a base compound x is a base so let's assume that the base is naoh now let's write the chemical name and formula of a b and c so if NaOH reacts with zinc, the two products formed are sodium zincate and hydrogen. So A is sodium zincate, Na2Zn O2. When the compound X reacts with HCl, the substance B produced will be sodium chloride, the metal salt formed there, NaCl. And when it reacts with acetic acid, the salt formed there is sodium acetate, CH3COONA. Let's understand one thing. Since we took NaOH as the base, we have got these three as the product. You can take any base as an example and make products accordingly. Next question. From an experiment to study the properties of acetic acid, answer the following question. Name the substances which on addition to acetic acid produce carbon dioxide gas. Give relevant chemical equations for the above. How is carbon dioxide gas tested in the laboratory? Again, let's recollect the acid base reaction. Here it is given that acetic acid was reacted with something and then it gave carbon dioxide as the product. So, the reaction where acid produces carbon dioxide is when it reacts with a metal carbonate. So, the answer for the first question is a metal carbonate when added to acetic acid can release carbon dioxide gas. So, let's uh, take an example as sodium carbonate. So, acetic acid plus sodium carbonate gives sodium acetate plus carbon dioxide plus water. If you write that in an equation form, acetic acid is CH3COOH, sodium carbonate is Na2CO3. Now the two co constant product here is carbon dioxide and water. So the salt will be CH3COONA. How is carbon dioxide gas tested in the laboratory? We have already learnt this in the first chapter that when carbon dioxide gas is passed through lime water, the solution turns milky white in colour due to the formation of calcium carbonate. Continue to pass the gas through the solution and the solution becomes clear transparent solution. So this is the uh, test for carbon dioxide in laboratory. You can also have another test where you can take a burning matchstick and we know carbon dioxide is a good extinguisher. If the matchstick stops burning then again it is the simple test for carbon dioxide gas. Fifth question. State reasons. Tap water conduct electricity whereas distilled water do not. So observe the figure or the picture shown here, you can see that when there is a solution without any ions, the bulb doesn't glow and the bulb glows in the solution where it contains ion. When there are more ions, it glows with more brightness. So now taking this concept, let's understand why tap water conduct electricity whereas distilled water do not. It is because tap water contains so many ions. Tap water means it is coming through the earth's crust. So there are so many free salts that get dissolved in this tap water and it contains free ions whereas distilled water is pure water and it does not contain any ions. So the ions in the tap water help it to conduct electricity whereas distilled water do not conduct any electricity. Second question. Dry hydrogen chloride gas does not turn blue litmus to red. 
so observe figure 2.4 of activity 2.9 in your textbook you can see that in preparation of hcl gas sodium chloride is reacting with concentrated h2so4 a gas is released and it is dried using the uh, guard tube which consists of calcium chloride and when there is a dry blue litmus paper taken there is no change in color but when moist blue litmus paper is taken it turns to red in color from this activity we can understand that dry hydrogen chloride gas doesn't turn the litmus paper red because it does not release any hydrogen ions whereas when dry hydrogen chloride gas gets in contact with the wet litmus paper the presence of water content in the litmus paper makes hydrogen chloride that is hcl to release h plus ions and it is because of this property that the litmus paper turns to red this activity also gives us a conclusion that most of the properties shown by acids and bases are because of their ability to release ions. Question C. Milkman usually adds a very small amount of baking soda to fresh milk during summer. We know that milk contains lactic acid and hence it is slightly acidic in nature. The pH value of milk is actually 6.7. What happens when milk is kept? We know that milk easily turns to curd during summer season and hence to prevent this milkman adds baking soda to increase the overall pH of the milk. Here baking soda is a base and it creates a neutralization reaction there and what happens the pH value of milk rises. So it will take more time to set into curd that is we are actually increasing the curdling time of the milk by doing so. That's why milkman usually adds a very small amount of baking soda to fresh milk. In this answer the key term is baking soda is a base and it neutralizes milk in summer and it increases the curdling time of milk. Question D. During dilution acid is added to water and not water to acid. If you have observed my video of dilution of acid in that video I have discussed that we should always add acid to water while dilution and that to drop by drop. Now let's see the reason. Dilution is a process which is exothermic in nature. Here the key word is exothermic. If water is added to acid, enormous amount of heat is released. It can make the vessel in which the solution is taken to explode. The content might spill. It may spill to the person standing nearby and to the objects kept nearby. And we know stronger or concentrated acids are corrosive in nature. So while dilution, acid should be added to water drop by drop with continuous stirring so that the amount of heat released can be controlled. Let's always understand that even if you add acid to water, it is highly exothermic. But when you add acid to water drop by drop, you are able to control the amount of heat release. That is, you are able to give time for the heat to uh, increase. So it, that reaction can be controllable. That process can be controllable. Question E. Ammonia is a base but does not contain hydroxyl group. We know that bases are substances that release hydroxyl group that is OH- ions in water but ammonia is an exceptional case. It does not have any hydroxyl group but when ammonia is mixed with water it forms ammonium hydroxide and this ammonium hydroxide can release ammonium ions and OH- ions. That is why ammonia is considered as a base. So I hope that you have understood all the five questions that we have discussed in this video. All these questions were repeated uh, twice or thrice in various question papers. If you liked this video, do hit the like button and share the video among your friends. Also, please subscribe the channel and show your support and love. What type of content do you want in this channel again? You can drop comments about the topics that you wish to see in my channel. It can be contents, it can be type of questions like case study, assertion, reason etc. So if you wish you can post in the comments so that I can make a video on that.